Well, let's drill down now on a pledge today from Conservative leader Andrew Scheer to shut down the flow of asylum seekers at unofficial border crossings in this country with the United States. Uh, Jamie Liu is an associate law professor at the University of Ottawa. She joins me now. Professor Liu, uh, thanks for joining me today. It's good to see you. Thanks for having me. Maybe best to break down Andrew Scheer's proposal today into, into two parts, the border and his pro broader proposals on immigration. So if I can, let me start with the border. He's saying he'll shut down the flow of asylum seekers by renegotiating the safe third country agreement with the U.S. But if those negotiations uh, don't work and so far they don't seem to be going all that quickly, he'll act unilaterally to stop the flow. What could he do? Well, I think that's a disingenuous promise to make. We have an extremely long border. Um, it is really hard to manage or to watch every inch of that border. And so I'm really not quite sure how he uh, plans on, on doing that. Um, in terms of renegotiation, renegotiating the Safe Third Country Agreement, I'm not sure what, what there is to renegotiate. There are, it's designed originally to prevent people from making a claim at the border, but really what it's doing is redirecting people to cross outside the official ports of entry. If we're talking about you know, managing an efficient and um, orderly border crossing for people, um, I'm curious to know why the Conservative government doesn't want to just get rid of the Safe Third Country Agreement and direct people to um, the crossings that we have. We already have the institutional, we already have the buildings, we already have the systems in place. And these are considered some of the gold standard in terms of the systems and processes we have in place. So I'm really curious as to why the Conservatives do not want to just direct people back to where they are supposed to cross at the border. Right, right. Um, but I guess, I guess the thinking is, I mean, uh, I'm assuming that what he's got in mind is, and he didn't go into great detail today, but we've heard other Conservatives talk about it before, is just say, look, we're going to designate uh, the whole border, as you've talked about, the, 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 the kilometers long, wide open border in many places, as an official border crossing. In other words, no matter where you have crossed into Canada, we consider the U.S. a safe third country, you'll be turned around and sent back. So, uh, I mean, you're, you're saying that's unworkable. Well, practically speaking, how, first of all, will uh, people know that they've crossed at the land border? Uh, when you cross at an unofficial port of entry, there isn't a border guard there, there isn't the infrastructure there to greet people, to process people. So it's unclear to me how he will identify who are those people that are crossing at our U.S.-Canada land border. And secondly, even if there was a way to identify those people, um, you're going to, they're already in Canada. Process them accordingly. Um, give them the opportunity to go through the systems that we have in place. It is unclear to me how he would turn those people back. There isn't the infrastructure all across the border that would uh, make this a reality in terms of turning people back right away. So it seems disingenuous to me to say that the entire border would be made a safe third country agreement zone and that we would immediately turn people back. That doesn't seem realistic or practical. So, so what, would, what would lifting um, the safe third country agreement do? That's the, that's the suggestion or suspending it. That's the suggestion today from Jagmeet Singh. Just suspend the safe third, third country agreement. What would that do? What that would do is that it would send people the message that they could come to our official ports of entry, our official border crossings, and you know, make themselves known to officials apply for asylum, everybody gets through the system, and it doesn't mean that when you apply for asylum, you will get asylum or refugee protection. Process these people, if they are deserving protection, give it to them. If not, then there's a process in place to have persons removed from Canada. Um, in my mind, this speaks to a more efficient and orderly way to manage the border. It would mean that people would not be going to makeshift border crossings like Roxham Road, um, and it would divert resources away from managing uh, unofficial border crossings to doing what we already have in place, an efficient and well-run system at our border, right. official so, border crossing. I guess the argument on the other side, right, is right now if you, if you show up at a, at a regular border crossing, given the safe third country agreement, and you come to a safe, uh, to a, a regular border crossing and, and want to claim asylum, you're turned around right away, aren't you? That's right. So if you get rid of the Safe Third Country Agreement, though, the problem with uh, whether or not you are eligible to make a refugee claim would be taken away because it would mean that just because you crossed out of Canada, U.S. official port of entry doesn't make you um, ineligible to make a claim. So once you take that barrier away, people will be more likely to come to our official ports of entry and make a, a claim for, for refugee protection. This has been done in the past. 
you know, in the beginning when the Safe Third Country Agreement came about, um, it was one that really only benefited Canada in the sense that we were responding to um, calls by the United States our security measures after 9-11. Um, and during that time, there were calls already being made about the issues of how do we manage when people try to um, circumvent um, official ports of entry. So we've known for many, many years that this was an issue. We've known for many years that this policy, this agreement has not decreased the number of refugee claims being made in Canada, which is why it was brought in the first place to deal with mm -hmm. backlogs happening at the Immigration Refugee Board. People are going to come. We are seeing that now. Let's make sure that we manage uh, the processing of people at the border in a humane way and in a way that's efficient and orderly, which is what I think every government should be striving to do. Okay, let's finish on this. On the immigration side, he's, Mr. Shear is promising to prioritize those who go through the family reunification program. How, how significant is that? I think it's a, I'm cautiously optimistic about this call. I mean, the previous uh, government, the Liberal government had, um, you know, a, a serious mandate letter related to this. But, you know, there are very little details with regards to what is promised. I will be curious to see whether uh, the Conservative Party would be interested in either eliminating or increasing the cap in the number of applications that people can make in, for example, sponsoring their parents and grandparents, interested in seeing how the processing there's been long wait times and long processing times with sponsorship applications. And finally, there is this um, regulation that allows the government to impose a lifetime ban on people to sponsor family members that were not originally declared or examined when people were originally immigrating. And I think this is a problematic provision that many advocates have called for its repeal. I would be interested to see if the Conservatives would entertain repealing it altogether. All right, Professor Jamie Liu, uh, thanks for your perspective tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.